Hello and welcome to another Nick Jitsu Wii Gear talk um, where I go through little bits of my rig. Today I want to go through the, the most um, underrated pedal that you've probably got in your guitar rig and that's... Aye, it's a tuner. No, not your tuner. It's your volume pedal. <laughs> Um, just before we start, I've been inundated with an email um, asking me why I always play the blue guitar and not the yellow one. So today I thought I'd bring out the electric banana and uh, give it an airing. Um, as you can see, it's it's all fully bananaed up and yellow with dots on it, and it's got a Lumitone death markers in there. There's a video somewhere explaining all about this guitar um, before you ask. I searched high and low for a decent volume pedal and um, tried pretty much everything on the market with various kind of um, uh, various successes but um, when I saw I, I started using one of these as a Wawa it's the best Wawa you can ever get fantastic product and it's by a company called Sonus um, and this is the Wahoo I've already done a video on the Wahoo it's quite an old video but um, it tells you exactly what you need to know about this this fantastic wee pedal so from the same company, um, I saved up and bought their volume pedal, which is called the Volume. And um, it's quite expensive for a volume pedal. I'm not sure what the price is now. It's around, you know, I think it's $300, something like that. And before you think that's expensive for a, a volume pedal, um, you know, this pedal's got more butts than a Kim Kardashian photo shoot. It's a volume pedal, but it's also a compressor. It's a volume pedal, but... It's also a noise gate. It's a volume pedal, but it's also a tremolo. It's a volume pedal, and it's a volume pedal. Um, and it's also... It's also a tuner. I'm just of that. It's also got an inbuilt tuner. Um, and just when you thought it couldn't get any better, it's a volume pedal, but it's also an expression pedal that you can MIDI up. And um, I've used this with my MIDI rig, my guitar, my guitar synth rig. And I use it with the um, the Line Six HX effects, and uh, for pitches and for uh, modulations, it's got LFOs built in. It's got all kinds of shenanigans. So it's not just a simple volume pedal. It's the only volume pedal I think you'd ever ever need. Um, and it's the first pedal in my chain, um, so it doesn't add any weakness. It, I A B all these pedals. Um, when I put my rig together and, and take a pedal out and then see how much gain I've got um, in my playing um, when I've got overdrive on or something like that and it doesn't suck any of the juice out so perfect pedal so let's, let's have a look at um, exactly how it works and what it sounds like so I've got a kind of overdrivey sound rather than just a straight clean sound because we all know what a clean sound sounds like and um, using a volume control on a clean sound just makes it quieter um, it does affect the bounce a little bit, that, that kind of bloom that you get from the note. But you'll hear it better if I use a bit of overdrive. So I've got my amp set to just kind of an overdrive-y sound. And that's just the blue guitar amp one going straight into the blue box, straight into the computer. Um, I'm hearing it through a speaker as well, but there you go. So it's just a kind of like classic old Marshall kind of sound. Now, um, the way that I've got this set up is that um, a lot of people use the volume control when they play. So they'll have it full up and then just dial it off a little bit to about halfway to get a slightly softer sound with a, with a um, And then you, you take it further still and you get that kind of clean sound. So what I can do is I've actually set this up not just as a traditional volume control but on the, the toe setting, on the heel setting. I don't know my heel from my toe. It's because I'm wearing funky socks again. Look at my funky socks. Um, on the heel setting, I've actually got it set so... It's clean. So this would be my volume control at about two to three, something like that. So I can play chords and all that kind of thing and uh, noodle about cleanly. 
and then I can then go all the way up and I've got my <laughs> Got my full on overdrive sound. So um, I can do all that without touching my knob. So we can do a wee bit of this. from jazz to rock that quickly. Can't do that with any other pedal, can you? So this time, this is like having my volume all the way off, but my volume is up. So what I can have is I can have a kind of... Uh I can have that gradual kind of uh, gain explosion that comes out. But the cool thing is, if you can see by my funky sock under the, the pedal there, you see the little lights that come on as my foot goes down. So I can gauge live on a very dark stage um, where you can't really hear what's going on a lot of the time. And if you've got, um, if you're wearing in ears, it's quite difficult to gauge what volume you're actually at a lot of the time. So. What else does it do? Well, you know it's a compressor and you know it's a noise gate. So you know what a noise gate does. It, it basically has noise and then it shuts the gate. That's what a noise gate does. I don't use the noise gate in this because I've got noise gates in a whole load of other stuff. So I don't really need it. And I try not to use them because I'd rather just not have the noise. So I use good cables and all that kind of thing. So you will hear noise as I turn my, my guitar up. Oops. When I got the volume up, you hear a bit of noise there, but um, this guitar is not very well earthed and it's got wires in it and I don't know what I'm doing. I'd, I'd end up blowing up half of Watford if I if I did anything electrical. So I don't, I don't really use the compressor on here because I've got specialised compressor pedals that um, help me compress stuff. So, um, but I, I've got just a tad of a smidgen of a, a wee bit here. So, when it's fully depressed, the compressor comes on and it helps the tail of the note, as you can hear, still, still going. You can go and have a bite to eat and still be hearing that one. Um, it just helps the length of the note. It doesn't actually squash any of the, the transient at the start. Um, so yeah, really, really handy feature. And it's great if I've just got, you know, a simple little jazz gig, take that pedal, straight into the blue guitar amp that's pretty much it you know so those of you who know me pretty well will know that i'm a big fan of alan holdsworth can't play anything like him um <laughs> who can apart from alan holdsworth Beautiful sound. So what I did for that was use the volume in the traditional way, um, just as a traditional volume pedal, and uh, added a bit of delay and a wee bit of re well, say a wee bit of re re reverb, quite a lot of reverb, and uh, a wee bit of compression as well, and some silly chords, and that's it. You get an instant Alan Holdsworth. Let's just say you're too lazy to to actually move the foot, um, like the Wahoo, the volume has an automatic function. So I can just switch it on like that and then play the same thing. Um, there you go. Did you see the pedal? There wasn't a funky sock in sight. If I was playing something like Footprints, for example, you know, old jazz standard, I can just play a chord and it will fade in and then play that kind of thing. So um, you get different swell effects and you know, it's good under, uh, one of my pet hates is under bass solos when everybody drops out. Um, you kind of have to drop out to a certain extent because of the frequency of the bass, but you don't have to drop out and not play completely. What you can do is you can change the timbre of what you're playing over the top um, to allow the bass player to actually bounce off the harmony. That kind of thing. So um, this is quite important for bass players, I'd say. If 
you watch the lights flicker, all right, so no funky sock this time, just watch the lights as I play. So I'll play a chord. See, as the chord dies away, the tremolo just gets bigger and bigger. So you actually get the, the sound of the chord. See what I mean? You get, it kind of um, allows the chord to say, I'm a chord! I'm another chord! Like that. And it's a much more interesting effect than just having tremolo on all the time like that. I've got a new album out called Hyper Real, um, which you've all gone out and bought, haven't you? Well, it's still available on Bandcamp. Um, first track on that album is a track called uh, Trigger Point, and in that that song, I use the the volume. I use the I, I mean I use the volume all over the album um, for dynamic uh, dynamic sounds and changing the, the the gain on the guitar sounds and things like that. But in real time, I also use it as an expression pedal on some of the synths, um, so it works on keyboards and stuff as well. Um, and one of the effects that I use quite a lot is tremolo, but in a, a kind of different way. So I use an automatic tremolo on this. And on trigger point, just before the solo, there's a, the rhythm guitars do this. It's a great sound. It just sounds like something bouncing around. Now that... with a nice minor 11th chord, which is a bit ambiguous, you put a little bit of panning on that, a kind of panning effect, and it goes round and round your head like that, and it makes you sick. So there's another track on the album Hyper Rail. You have bought the album now, haven't you? Um, that's called Godzilla vs. Nick Jitsu. Um, don't ask. I said don't ask! It's complicated. Um, it's a very complex song, actually. But there's a, a point in it where I wanted to sound like Godzilla, as you do, um, or Godzilla playing guitar. So I got the kind of sound by, I um, can't quite remember how I did it, but it was something along the lines of playing a, a, an A flat and a G at the same time. You get a kind of what they call a wolf tone, which um, is where the frequencies are jumping around and clashing with each other and you get destructive interference, I think, or something like that. And you bend just one of the notes slightly. And then what you do is you add the the tremolo, you add a slow tremolo, then a fast tremolo, while um, dipping the whammy bar and then pulling the whammy bar, then pushing it back down again. So you get this kind of thing. Like that. And it sounds kind of monster-like. As you can see, the volume's a very versatile pedal. Um, with all the things it's got in it, like compressor and noise gate and the Don't tremolo. Don't forget it's a the, tuner. I know. And the tuner. Um, but the one thing that most people don't know it does is it's a brilliant expression pedal. And I use expression pedals a lot, and it's very hard to get a good one that's consistent. So, um, again, I've used loads of them on the market, but this is the one. Um, so, as a uh, as a expression pedal, you just link it up to HX effects. You know, for for the end of uh, rocking all over the world or something like that. It's great fun. So, there's a track on the Zipper Tongue album, a uh, rock band that I was involved with a few years ago, and uh, that's the the volume. Um, linked to, mm, mm, can't remember, would have been one of my TC Electronics uh, gizmos, um, but that gave me a whammy as well. And uh, the riff. <laughs> it kind of gives you a whammy that's not, uh, that's really smooth, really quick, and it's not going to, it doesn't catch you out by not quite making it and not quite making it back. You can calibrate the pedal really cleverly with this. So being a job in musician, you get asked to do all kinds of things. And one of the, the groups I was asked to play with was Ultimate Elton and the Rocket Band. Um, it's a guy called Paul Bacon. 
who does a Elton John tribute band. And they are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. If you get a chance, go and see them. And if you shut your eyes, or even if you open your eyes, you'll think it's Elton John that's actually on the stage. But one of the songs, obviously, that we play is uh, that they play is um, Rocket Man. And, uh, of course, Rocket Man uses a slide on the... Like that. I hate slide guitar. I've always hated it. It's good when other people do it, when somebody like Derek Trucks or uh, Dave Toronzo, I think his guy, the guy's name was. It's great when other people do it. I just sound like I'm scraping my nails down a blackboard. Um, and when I was in my U2 tribute band days, I had a slide for various things. I kept dropping them. They'd go under the stage. I just got sick of them. So um, I developed this kind of idea of using the whammy pedal and a whole load of effects to disguise the fact that I wasn't doing the proper thing which is what I normally do. And when you play, you know, you get to Rocket Man. I'm a Rocket Man! You just do that with a pedal. Easy. Um, also, I'm playing um, my MIDI guitar, my synth guitar, keyboard guitar, is playing acoustic. So it's an acoustic guitar sound playing on the keyboard, and then the real guitar sounds more like the keyboard. The other good thing is that they're made in Scotland. Kind of like this beer here that I'm drinking, Orkney Gold. I don't know where about in Scotland it's from, probably from Shetland. But the one other thing I've got to mention about the Wahoo, uh, sorry, the, the volume and the Wahoo actually, is that if you've got a power brick like this, both these pedals are 500 milliamps. And um, when you're buying pedals and then you start getting into power bricks and things like that, You've got to know your milliamps. And I've got some pedals like my flame drive, which is like 20 milliamps. So each of these throws out 100 milliamps. So I can attach, you know, one of these doodas to, uh, to that straight in. And then that goes into that pedal. Um, for the, the Wahoo and the volume, because they're 500 milliamps, you need to give them 500 milliamps. And on the power brick, there's two bits there, two uh, outputs there, that are 250 milliamps each. And what you need to buy is one of these connectors. It's a Y connector. That's uh, um, I got that from Andertons. Thank you, Andertons. And uh, you just plug that into the doodah. You plug that into the thingamabob. And then that throws out the 500 biscuits per hour or whatever the pedal needs. Um, it's all very technical stuff, but just letting you know that's what you need to buy. So thank you very much for watching. Um, you can get the pedals and all the information on the Sonus website. Um, I don't work for Sonus, by the way, just before you say. Um, I just like the stuff, and if I like the stuff, I'll do videos on it. Do the thing with the What's It. Don't forget to buy the, the Hyper Real album. Did I mention the Hyper Real album? Bye. Okay. Um, and, yeah, there you go. Do the thing with the what's it and i'll see you next time thank you very much <laughs> ah the tuner oh i didn't show you the tuner for the tuner you just hold the the doodah button and then it pops up ton tune and all you do is you play I know. Oh, that's way short. Have I done the whole video short? Am I going to have to do the whole video again?